Hey y'all, today is the beginning of March, March 1st, and as always in my new series, I am going to be telling you about the seeds that I'm gonna be sowing outdoors and indoors this month. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up and make sure you drop me a comment below. Let me know what seeds you're working with, what you're starting indoors, what you're starting outdoors, and as always, give me a thumbs up. Okay, just a reminder of what I have out before I begin planning. I always have my calendar. If you haven't seen my calendar series on uh, gardening calendars, you should check that out. I utilize a uh, post-it uh, situation where I can move post-its around depending on what I'm doing. I put extra stuff that I need to be working on up high. And it is definitely a no guilt approach uh, to gardening, which is great. I also have all my seeds out, some notes, um, all the seeds over here all ready to go. And so let me go over what we're going to be planting in March. Okay, March is the time of the year where things really start to warm up. My last freeze tends to be the end of the second week, third week in March. That's typically the last freeze for my area, which is very exciting. We actually had a freeze last night, which is, was just at the 30 degree mark, which was great. But we're actually expecting at least 10 days of sunshine, so no freezing temps. In fact, the lowest the temps will be will be the upper 40s, which is exciting. And we have some days that'll be in the 60s, like 65, 67. Yeah. So that is all very exciting. So definitely spring is almost here in the North Texas area. As a reminder, I am Wiley Zone 8A. So what I'm gonna be doing, because we are finally at a warmer time of the year, is I'm actually gonna be doing some direct sowing this month. I plan on doing um, my cucumbers, so let me pull those out. Okay, I'm going to be doing a couple of different types of cucumbers. I had really great uh, luck with cucumbers last year and I really enjoyed pickling them. I think they're fun. I grow them over my large trellis. I'm going to be doing three different varieties. I'm gonna be doing a Boston Pickling Cucumber and by Fairy Morse. Comes with 100 seeds. I will not be doing 100 seeds. I will be direct sowing these outside. It's the perfect time of year to get after those, which is very exciting. Um, but these are excellent for pickling. They are typically, all right, it doesn't say the size um, of them, but they're supposed to be great for pickling. So I'm excited about that. The other cute type of cucumber I'm gonna be direct sowing right now is called Pickle Bush by Burpee. And these are four to five inch fruits that are perfect for pickling. So I'm gonna be doing those, and those are also gonna be climbing up on the trellis as well. These are 52 days to harvest, that's exciting. The first one were 50 to 75 days. Ah, that's so exciting. Um, and then the last variety that I'm be growing is a garden bush pickle hybrid. I grew this last year, I had really great results with it, and it was great for pickling. It's also by Fairy Morris. Eight to 10 days germination. Um, these should, it doesn't say the fruits because it looks like I cut it off, but um, these will be great as well. This one also can work in a um, pot. It needs at least a 12 inch pot. Uh, and this one is 43 days to harvest as well. So excited about cucumbers here. This year, I always enjoy cucumbers. I think they're just a fun, plant to grow with almost instantaneous results. I mean, when you have them in like 45 days, that's just fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So I'm super excited about that. Now, I will also be sowing quite a few herbs this month. I will be doing um, basil. I've already started a little bit of it, but let me find that real quick. Okay, I'm gonna be growing uh, cardinal basil and I'm growing this for a cut of cut flower kind of approach. It's not necessary necessarily for culinary needs. And I got mine from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. It sprouts in six to 10 days. It's already sprouted and um, going really, really well. It's not frost hardy, so I will not be planting this outside until we are clear of the frost. So that'll probably be end of March, beginning of April. But I do wanna get all of these going. I'll have quite a few of these going. The other basil I am doing are purple ruffles basil from um, MI Gardener. And if you've never shopped for seeds at MI Gardener, there's not like a ton of variety. However, 
the price you cannot beat and the quality is wonderful. So check out In My Gardener if you haven't so far, um, but you can get, I'm like $2 for a packet of seeds. I mean, 200 seeds. I mean, it's just wonderful prices. So check that out as well, but I'll be growing purple ruffles basil. Okay, I'm also gonna be starting straw flowers. I am going to be sewing these inside. Okay, so these are not a direct sew at this point in time. I'm gonna be doing a monster white straw flower. I'm also going to be doing purple red straw flower from MI Gardener, vintage white straw flower from MI Gardener, and silvery rose straw flower from MI Gardener. And then I'm also going to be doing a apricot peach mix of straw flowers as well. Once these are, once we're clear of freezing temps, I'll move those straw flowers outside. Um, I've already had some that I've done, utilize them as a hardy annual, so I kind of overwintered them. I lost about half of them, half of them still remain, so that's pretty good. I have a jump start on those, but I will be sewing these indoor and getting those moved out once we're free of frost fear. I also plan on direct sowing hyacinth bean at the end of this month. It tends to want a little bit warmer temperatures, germination 65 to 70 degrees inside um, the earth. So definitely towards the end of March, I'll be sowing hyacinth beans on my arches. And I love the look of this. I literally use it for nothing else except for joy of looking at it. So it's a very, very pretty plant. Another seed that I'm going to be starting indoors this month is Orlea, and this will be my first year growing it. I saw it on several other YouTube channels this last year and fell in love with it. It almost looks like I, I love bridal wreath spirea, and I have two large bushes of that. However, it doesn't really stick around very long, and the floral tends to just flake off really easily. And so the Orlea has a similar look, but is a sturdier bloom. So I'm really looking forward to trying these, and I will be uh, sewing these indoors this month. I also had a failed attempt with apricot stock. I sewed gosh, 25, 30 seeds, and I had one germinate. So they were my uh, seeds from Florette. Now, I had great luck with other stock seeds from Florette. This particular variety just didn't do very well. So I'm going to go ahead and give it another round and go ahead and sow it this month in March and see if I can't get some of these gorgeous blooms to grow. Okay, I'm also gonna go ahead and start direct sowing some sunflowers. I will wait towards the end of the month, probably the third or the fourth week in March, and I will be direct sowing them in some areas, some very specific areas. Specifically, I'm growing some shorter, ooh, sorry. <laughs> Specifically, I'm growing some shorter sunflowers this year. Specifically, um, the munchkin variety from Fl Sunflower Selections. I get a lot of my sunflower seeds from Sunflower Selections. Great process prices, wonderful variety. So I'm gonna be growing the munchkins and I'm also gonna be growing the teenies as well. I had really great luck with both of those last year and I look forward to having multiple rounds. So this will be my first round that I'll get started and then I'll probably start another round of seeds probably end of April into May and then I'll just keep that going so I have a wide variety of these uh, sunflowers throughout the year. I also am gonna start a dwarf teddy bear. These are about 75 days to bloom. Some of these will grow do great in pots but I'm really excited to do the teddy bear the dwarf teddy bear I think it's a fun um, interesting bloom and these should be ready let's see April May beginning of June which is awesome so isn't that crazy that I'm already planting now for things in June <laughs> which is awesome so I'm gonna be doing uh, those those will be direct sown I'm also gonna start a couple of branching sunflowers. I'm actually a huge fan of branching sunflowers. I definitely always plant pro cuts as well. I think those are fun, but I love the look and the whimsical quality of a branching sunflower within my garden. As a reminder, I'm not a production flower farm type of gardener. I am growing things specifically for my own joy and for arrangements within my own home. So one of the ones I'm gonna be doing is um, the Magic Roundabout. These are about 75 days to bloom. Their height is about six feet, so they'll be planted towards the back, but they have a four inch flower that blooms until frost. Colors range from cream with a rose center to apricot with a dark red center. Absolutely beautiful. Gonna be growing some of those. I'm gonna be direct seeding those as well. 
And then I'm also going to be direct seeding some heirloom, heirloom Beauties sunflower. And this is a mix and anywhere from five to eight feet tall. They are branching blooms that include Lemon Queen, Autumn Beauty, and Velvet Queen. I'm very excited about those, get those started. They are typically, it doesn't say how long um, until they're ready to go. Yeah, but all, all of the sunflowers are recommended one to two weeks after your average frost. So I'll be planting those outside towards the end of March. And once again, that is a direct sow. It is not something I'm doing indoors at this point in time. Okay, this is also a great time of year to start direct sowing zinnias. I will typically put them out the last week in March and I'll just sprinkle them into the soil and then rough it up a little bit and water them and well, you wanna make sure that you're watering them on a daily basis, keeping the seeds moist at this time of the year for zinnia. So let me show you some of the varieties that I do plan on growing for zinnia this year. I'm gonna be doing the queen lime orange. I'm also gonna be doing the queen lime red, the queen lime blush, jazzy red, which is a kind of shorter variety, Persian carpet, which is also a shorter variety, pink senorita, and polar bear. And I'm gonna grow some other varieties, but these are some new varieties that I'm growing this year. And once again, a lot of those are gonna be direct seed. I'll start a round of them at the end of March, putting them out, and then I'll follow up about anywhere from two to four weeks later with another round of seeds so that I can have plentiful plentiful zinnias throughout the entire growing season. I'm also going to be starting mint. I'm going to be starting that indoor sowing and that is going to go in a pot. I'm going to be growing marvelous mint from Baker's Creek, which I'm excited about. Now the mint I utilize as a greenery, some, some other greeneries I'm going to be starting inside. I'm going to be starting Cress Green Dragon from Florette. I'm also gonna be starting some ornamental grasses, including bunny tail. Just looking forward to that. That's gonna be an indoor sewing. And then I'm also gonna be starting some new to me things. So I'm gonna be starting clary sage inside. That's supposed to be a great flower and a great greenery for cut floral. And it's a hardy annual. That's kind of exciting. I'll have to remember that for the fall and get this started in the fall as well. I'm also gonna be uh, do a mignonette, white mignonette, and this is an annual 24 to 36 inches high. I'm gonna start it inside. It is mature in 60 to 70 days. Super exciting with that. And then this is actually one of my favorite blooms that I'm gonna be growing um, this year. I'm gonna start this in March as well. And it is a Starfire Mix Marigold. And it's about 90 days. I'm very excited about the look of these marigolds. They're kind of petite and soft. So I think that that'll be really fun to do as well. Now is also a great time to direct seed uh, celosia and um, some amaranth in this area. Once again, you wanna make sure you're past the freeze date. So typically the last week in March, but you can wait till April. April is always a great time too, but you can direct sow those into the earth, which are fabulous as well. You can always start them indoors, but they're just so easy to start outdoors that you know sometimes I don't even bother. I am going to be starting some Glass Gems corn indoors um, in this month. The reason I'm starting it indoors is I really want to get it started, but I don't actually have the bed that I need it to go in ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started indoors, and then I will transplant these corn um, seedlings outside once that new bed is ready to go. I am not growing this for an edible. I am growing this for beautiful fall arrangements. Another great bloom to direct sow at this point in time is Cosmos. You can start those after the last after the last freeze. Those can be um, direct sowed outside. Okay, so to recap, I am actually doing some direct sowing this month. I'm going to be direct sowing my cucumbers. I'm going to be direct sowing sunflowers, and also it's a good time to start sow direct sowing some of those um, heat-loving blooms. And remember, we're going to be direct sowing these after the last frost in your area. Zinnias, Cosmos, Celosia, Amaranth, all of those are its great time towards the end of this month in this area, that's Wiley Zone 8A, to start direct sowing some of those seeds. 
indoors, I'm going to be doing a wide variety of those new blooms that I got from Florette, and I'm also going to be doing a wide variety of herbs, including basil, parsley, cilantro. I'm also going to be doing um, some cucumbers, oh, straw flowers. I'm going to be doing a wide variety of straw flowers, getting those started. I'm also going to be going back to my apricot stock that didn't go well and give it another round and see how that goes as well. Okay, now that we've gotten through all the seeds that are going to be starting either indoors or outdoors, I want to give you guys an update and show you the seeds that I currently have growing in my house or outside in the greenhouse. Okay, here's my seed setup inside. I have a wide variety of seeds going right now, and we'll kind of take a little peek in here. I have my purple ruffles basil, my cardinal, cardinal basil, which are all doing really good. My Russian status, which just started, look at that little one right in front, just started coming up. And Chinese forget-me-lots, which are all looking great. In about the two weeks, I'll be repotting those. In here, I have Scabiosa Fama White, which did really good. However, the Scabiosa, oh, I think, I can't remember what it was called. Something Bonnet did not germinate at all, so that's a little disappointing. I have a wide variety of foxgloves going, including foxgloves foxy mix, foxgloves apricot beauty, and just a mix of foxglove as well. And then this last one over here are china asters in that kind of apricot seashell pink. Down here, I started another round of jalapenos and, oops, I just fell down, mini bell pepper, pepper mix, as well as the black strawberry tomatoes. I made a row for the purple bumblebee tomatoes, but I forgot to add seeds there. <laughs> so there's nothing there. Get another round of those going. Over here are the proven winter seeds that I had planted. They're doing really, really good. Um, the hot and heavy pepper is doing good. The best pesto besto. The cocktail tomatoes are doing good. And it's kind of hard to see over there. And this is a hard dome to open. So let me see if I can get over here. But see that little bitty green one right there? Those are the ever bearing strawberries, which I'm really excited that they germinated. A lot of people were asking about them. They're very interested to see how they do. So those will be getting moved out in about two weeks into their own pots. And then down here, I have a wide variety of snapdragons, including Costa Silver snaps. Potomac Lavender Snaps, Madam Butterfly Red Snaps, and then I also started some thistle. I don't typically have a lot with the, uh, luck with thistle. You can already see some of the seeds rotting right there, but I do have some at the back that are germinated. You see those ones towards the back that have the um, roots coming out? It's very exciting. So I'm working on Star Frost Thistle and Blue Glow, Glow Thistle. So we'll see how those do. I don't know. They tend to rot a lot for me. I struggle with them. We'll see how they do. Okay, let me show you the seeds that I have going outside. This is my Amazon greenhouse. I have a video on it showing you, um, this is its second season. It's held up beautifully. It's really, really great. I've been very happy with it. I do have some spring blooms that I recently purchased that I've already got tucked in here, just keeping those warm just in case. Um, all of my pansies and violas are doing beautifully in here, coming up really, really well. I have three flats of those. Those are looking really good. And then I have a wide variety of cut flowers back here, including Pincushion Fata Morgana, Echinacea Green Twister, three varieties of carnations, which I'm super excited about, and they all had really great germination. Some fever few in that far right-hand side. Down here is I have my stock Anytime Mix, my stock Avalanche Supreme, and my one sad little stock that came up that was Apricot. I also have some more Bells of Ireland started, an Echinacea Paradise Super Duper, and a White Diamond Yarrow, which look at those seedlings. Stunning, absolutely stunning. This is a foxglove mix right down here, foxglove camelot cream, and then this is a whole flat of phlox white star. So all of these are doing really beautiful. This is my seedling update for you guys. A lot of these are um, in these trays right here are ready to be bumped up to larger um, 
larger pots, but truthfully, I'm getting so close to being able to put them directly into the ground that I might just hold off a couple of weeks and not repot them, just put them directly out there. We'll see, I'm not sure. If I do that, I feel like I might need to cover them a little bit with like some frost cross just to keep a little insects from eating my seedlings, we'll see. Also, check out these petunias. Absolutely to die for. I have a video at the end of the week that I'll be talking about all of these blooms. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying this series where you can kind of grow along with me. A lot of people ask, I don't know what to plant when and when do I start seeds and that kind of stuff. So this is my first attempt at this series where each month, the very beginning of the month, I'm talking to you about what seeds I'm going to be sowing indoors or outdoors so you can follow along with that as well. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.